pretty much a reset that um, we look at life for too long where we've got a big plan and we think that we're on this journey of this big plan. And for me, what I've learned in this conference is maybe you need to relook at it and say, do we reset? Uh, do we reimagine um, and rethink what it is that we're going to do? Um, and so it's, it's, it's interesting for me because I'm that planner guy, right? I've always had a plan. So, so it's, it's hard for me to imagine to, to think, OK, you know what? You've got to reset your life. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really making me think about that now. When you say that you're the kind of person who thinks long term and you're always planning, how do you apply that to your business? Well, um, from the concept of an idea to forming strategy, we always think 5, 10, 15 years. Um, and so you start behaving and believing and acting towards that 15 year goal or 10 year goal or 5 year goal. So being that plan person kind of pushes you to always think about it very long term. Um, but I think the world is kind of changing towards a much shorter because, you know, now every five years is an eternity if you think about it. Um, so from that perspective, uh, now the plans are more short term, right? It's like a year or a year and a half. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's the way I, I see that intersection. I mean, the Ramco Group manages 50 different businesses, so you're essentially a conglomerate at this point. How do you apply short-term thinking to 50 different business entities? So we got to think about the way that the 50 businesses need to behave. So they need to behave like 50 individuals, but coming together as a team. And so where, where in our group are you an individual? Where are you part of a team, which we call verticals? And then where are you as part of the whole group? Okay? Um, and so when you start thinking from that perspective, each organization really has to have that short-term goal of, of trying to achieve something in its own little space, but then be part of a bigger goal, which is its brothers and sisters that are in that vertical. Um, and then, of course, live by the values of the group, which is the global stuff. Right, um, And so we encourage leaders to think about their plans in those three levels. And by doing so, they end, up, they end up hopefully achieving what it is that we want to achieve. What is the size of your conglomerate? Uh, in terms of turnover? In terms of turnover. It's about $350 million a year. And the largest portion of that is from your printing and packaging business? Yeah, so printing and packaging accounts for about 38%. And then the legacy family business, which is construction and building materials, that accounts for about 33. Uh, those are the two biggest sectors. Then we are in uh, office products, office supplies and stationery. A general manufacturing, which is stuff that we were good at selling. Uh, in the construction side, we started vertically integrating and manufacturing like cables, uh, pipes, uh, tanks. Um, and then we have a whole services section where we do finance, where we do travel. Um, and pretty much anything that is uh, that we want to centralize, we've started building out as a service company uh, for the group, as opposed to a centralized model of uh, like a, an overhead that we don't see a PNL for. Um, and that's what we believe is is the African corporate uh, way of running a business. I don't think we can adopt a European or an American way. We've got to define and create our own. Um, and that's what we're busy trying to do. How do you apply innovation to a business as big as yours? So Africa is, is an interesting place to operate because there's a lot of innovation that is very Africa-centric. Okay? And, and so the innovation that happens is really to solve typically African problems. right? Um, so when you look at Kenya or Uganda or Tanzania, infrastructure, uh, reach to market, um, the impact of the middle person in the supply chain, all of those really impact the way that that, uh, that business happens. So that's the basis of innovation, right? How, how do we cut down those um, points that add cost to your business, okay? Because we're in a market that traditionally doesn't have uh, large amounts of money, right? The average person in Kenya doesn't have a lot of money. 
um, yet we're providing goods, services, commodities. And the only way we can do it without competing with the broader world is to innovate on the areas that, that we know are Kenyan specific. Right, so that's, that's where our innovation comes from. Can you give us an example of that? So an, a, a good example of that would be how, for instance, we are distributing pipes or we are distributing tanks in the country. And we know that at the end of the day, there's uh, the remote parts of, of Kenya where you need one single tank. And how are we getting it there? And, and so when we are creating strategies for how we are going to look at distribution, do we adopt a model of our own distribution or do we adopt a model of, of us appointing distributors? And, and should we now start looking at technology in providing that information to us or where the tanks are required so that we're not just sending and hoping to sell, but can we create a demand um, by way of someone having the ability to let us know that the tank's required and then leveraging of our network to to pretty much send the tank there, for instance, okay?